What's going on, everybody? Cigar Titan here once again with my good friend, Brother Stogie. Say hello to the people. Yo, what up, Cigar Fan? And today we have two very special guests with us today, Brother Stogie. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? You know what? Right now, I'm not going to tell you what his name is, but I'm just letting you know right now, he's a muggle and a fourth generation businessman. You got to stick around and find out who he is. <laughs> All right, you ready to get started? Let's rock. Welcome back, everybody. So we have with us today Luis Cuevas of Casa Cuevas Cigars yes. um, and Christine Odell, and she represents Casa Cuevas. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we have some questions for you guys today. You guys ready to get started? I am. So, <laughs> nervous? A little nervous? We talk. Don't, don't let the camera make you go outside. We're okay. <laughs> So tell us a little bit about uh, Casa Cueva. So we understand it's four, fourth generation, your fourth generation. Yeah, and actually I'm, I'm proud to say fifth generation. My, my son has come on board. Um, he is a student at FIU, okay. but he's also working actually a little more than part time with us. And uh, he's now director of operations. So yeah, awesome. fifth generation, um, he is not only involved with, you know, the paperwork and whatnot back at the office, but very much with picking out blends, having ideas, and uh, you know, it's just a, a real blessing to be able to travel with him and visit shops and whatnot. He was at TPE with me recently, so it's pretty cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So how did your how did your family get started in the cigar industry? So my, my great-grandfather uh, comes from the northern part of Spain and he goes to Cuba when he was 12, 13 years old. And he wound up going to Pinar del Rio, which is, if you look at a map of Cuba, it's a tippy most, tip, the, the westernmost tip of the island, and that's where tobacco grows. Okay. So he just sort of fell into it as a kid and became a tobacco farmer grower. Uh, yeah, it just happened to be that's what the labor there was, and he evolved with it. Then my grandfather took it to a whole different level and actually was very successful with it. Then in 1959, Castro confiscates everything, and then in late 60s we all we all left. Um, come back to the United States, and my uncle Sergio started a factory with my father. My dad was essentially financing, he would go back and forth, and my uncle was running the factory was in the 80s in the Dominican Republic in Santiago. And then here we are. Um, ultimately, what, what occurred was my grandfather, sorry, my uncle and my dad went their separate ways, and um, then I joined my dad, and, and then we just continued with it. So. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And how long have you been in there now? I've been 100% in this industry now for it's going to be 11 years. Okay. But I was part of that factory going as a kid since the 80s. I mean, when they opened it, so it's been my summers and whatnot. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so, so coming back to the factory, the the best thing we love about doing this is we get to give our cigar family, the cigar society, the kind of like the inside scope of what this is all about. Okay. So now we're talking about the factory in Santiago. Yep. Dominic, okay. So, the Tabacalera Las Lavas. That's right. Did they get that right? That's right. They get, they get 100%. That right. You did it very well. That's, right. that's a tongue twister, I, 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 I too. I'm well yeah. rounded, y'all. I'm trying to tell you what I'm trying to be. So, what I want to know, probably what a lot of people want to know as well, is what is that whole factory environment like? What is it like being in a tobacco factory? If you're a cigar smoker, as soon as you step foot into any tobacco factory, the first thing you want to do is smoke a cigar. I mean, it's there. It, you just you just want to do it. But the cool thing about it is you you really get to see and appreciate the labor and love that goes into making those cigars that everyone here enjoys. I mean, from deveining the leaves to sorting them out, deveining wrappers, sorting that out, wetting it, preparing it, putting it in the drying rooms, and then the process of actually blending them, baking them, the presses, then the wrapping. Um, little processes like the draw master machine, which takes care of whether a cigar is gonna be plugged or not. I mean, there's a lot that goes into it. And then you move into packaging, that's a world in of its own, right? The, these ladies that ban these cigars, they go a mile a minute. It's like watching a machine. If you ever get a video and take a look at it, I mean, because they get paid per piece. Right. So it's in their interest. Uh, the sorting of colors at the table when the cigars first land so that when you pick up a box of cigars They all look the same shade of that wrapper Remember it's, it's a variety of wrappers so that goes into it And then that has to be taken into account when they package you get to see the whole spectrum of it And then you walk into the aging rooms and I'm telling you you just want to smoke 
Okay. Uh, I mean, if you like to smoke cigars, which that's why you're watching this. Of course. Wow. <laughs> so it's a, it's a phenomenal, phenomenal um, place to be, and I'm, I'm blessed to be a part of it. Yeah, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. How often do you get to go out to the factory? I go there about once a month. Okay. Uh, my dad is there all the time. Okay. All the time. Uh, they, he flies back to the States on the weekends to see my kids. He doesn't really care about me anymore. And that, that's okay. <laughs> but um, yeah, he's always there. My mom and my dad have been there permanently since 1997. Okay. So that's okay. been a bit. So, so, yeah. speak, so, speak, so we're going to stay on the road of the tobacco factory. So, boss man, have you ever rolled a cigar yourself? Yes. And if so, how was that experience for you? It was embarrassingly awful. <laughs> uh, yes, this is cool, baby. I, 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 was, I was told by the rollers, uh, actually, um, so was Brandon Wells, if you guys are familiar with Cigar Mechanic, he was told the same thing, yeah. that I would absolutely starve um, if I had to do that for a living. Um, <laughs> it's really, really tough. It's really hard, uh, all of it. So th the bunching is difficult, and then the wrapping, I think, is even more difficult, so it comes out somewhat decent. Yeah, you, you really Definitely understand, yeah, oh my gosh, and then they get paid per piece. Right. So these guys are cranking out sometimes upwards of 400 cigars a day, depending on the size. Uh, but yeah, yeah, pretty amazing, pretty amazing. So you see Cigar Fan, when you walk into your humidor, or your, your cigar shop, and you're looking at these cigars and they're priced differently, and just not, not, not even the price, but just the quality and how nicely they're rolled, different color wrappers. There's, there's quality control that goes into these fine pieces of humanness right here. Show appreciation, baby. So, Christine, what's uh, what's been your role with Casa Cuevas? How long have you been, I guess, uh, a part of what Casa Cuevas is doing? Uh, full time, I've been uh, representing Casa Cuevas for the last uh, few months. Okay. And what's your role with Casa Cuevas? What, what specifically do you do with them? Uh, I represent them in California, Oregon, and Washington. Okay. And just recently opened up North Carolina. Okay. So. Okay. And you guys are spread out pretty much across the U.S. I'm seeing, you know, when you go on the website. Yeah, we're getting some traction, but it's difficult. I mean, uh, Christine has done a phenomenal, phenomenal job because my brand's been around two years, nine months, as you know, about the factory. If you did the math in your head, the factory's been around for 30. So we make yes. stuff, a lot of cigars for a lot of other people and have in the past. At least my father and my uncle have. Um, and when you get a brand like this, you need to really work it because it's not a household name. Right. So when the consumer steps into that humidor, why would they pick it up? Because it looks pretty. I mean, the price points are phenomenal, but there's other some really, really good cigars out there with the same price point. And what I'm aiming for is for that consumer to make this part of his rotation. Not the only cigar they smoke. I don't want that. I think that's foolish. There's right. too many good cigars out there. Right. But I want to be part of their rotation. How do you get it into their hands? That's where someone like Christine comes in and says, hey, I'm going to help you, Mr. Shop Owner. I'm going to get it into people's hands, sets up the events, and really works it. And she is a godsend. She's been phenomenal. Phenomenal. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. so, and have you always been a cigar smoker? No, I, I guess you would consider me a novice to cigar smoking. I've done it for about five years. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm still developing my palate, and I'm glad to do it. <laughs> she's, she's, she's being, you're showing some humility. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Come on now. Five years. Five years. <laughs> five years. That's, that's a good amount of time. <laughs> yeah. Well, do you have a favorite cigar? Um, actually, if I had a go-to cigar, uh, the Casa Cuevas Reserva Maduro is my go-to. Okay. I can start my day with it. I can end my day with it. I know everyone's palate's different, but I get a lot of the cocoa and coffee notes with it, mm -hmm. so I think it pairs well in the morning or ending your day. It's, it's one of my favorites. Kind of like a dessert stick? Absolutely. Yeah. It can be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so Christine, so not, not only being a rep for Casa Cuevas Cigar, you are now five years in, so you say you are officially an S-O-T-L. Mm -hmm. Yes, so for who, for those of you out there that do not know what that hashtag is, a hashtag is Sister of the Leaf. So how is that for you being in? I mean, the, the Sister of the Leaf community is growing. Mm -hmm. I see it on Instagram. I see it all over YouTube. They, the women are coming out for us, fellas. You know what I'm saying? So watch, watch you. Um, how is that for you in this industry? Having to know the blends, having to know the different types of cigars, and, and pretty much having to explain that level of expertise to men. How is that for you? Sometimes I feel like maybe it goes in my favor because I have to know everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I have that attention to detail. Mm -hmm. um, 
and I think women have a lot of passion in everything that they do, and I think that just comes across in, in how they move forward in the industry with anything, cigars um, being one of them. I heard that. Mm -hmm. Mercy. Definitely <laughs> seeing more and more women oh, yeah. crossing over and getting into cigars. You know, it usually starts off with some of the more, uh, I guess, flavored um, cigars, but you're starting to see more and more women in this industry. I think it's a great thing. Yeah, and, and I'm cautious sometimes. Um, I, I've learned because I've seen people crash and burn where they, they see a woman come into a shop and she's a smoker. She admits, I'm a smoker. And the first thing somebody wants to offer is a Connecticut. Right. And no, no. No, no, that may be way too soft for her palate. Right. So it's it's interesting to see that dynamic change. And that lady, you gotta ask her, what do you like? She may like a really strong Maduro or a spicy Habano. And you know, it's no longer, here's a Connecticut, it's gentle enough for you, young lady. Right. Uh, yeah, I've seen some of them get a little upset. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and rightly so. Right. All right, so within the Casa Cuevas line, there's one particular stick that I feel has a particular meaning, and that is the Mandaria, which is the sledgehammer Casa Cueva cigar. Is there a story behind that? Absolutely, and it's a, it's an unfortunate story with a great ending. Um, back in December, uh, my father and I bought a warehouse in Miami, Florida, and we started building it out, and we put a humidor so we could hold our cigars and distribute from there. Um, the warehouse itself is your typical warehouse with a bay door, an office door, and there's a back door to an alleyway as well. And the humidor was juxtaposed up against that back wall so you can liberate the space in the middle. It just makes sense. You put it up against the back wall and you work. In any event, um, we moved in completely in January after we did the flooring and whatnot. And this humidor is built so we can store the cigars. Everything was alarmed. No insurance yet because I was waiting to put fire extinguishers. I was dragging my butt a little bit, but whatever. Uh, the idea was if somebody were to get to that humidor, they go in through the bay door, the front door, the back door. I got alarms, I got sensors, I got everything, I'm good. No, what they did is they took a sledgehammer and they broke through the back wall in the alleyway and then cut into the middle of the humidor and stepped in Wow. and wiped us out of 25,000 cigars. Um, part of what really hurt, that, that was painful, but part of what really hurt, where we had these limited edition Flacos at the time, these, uh, we called them Flacos because they were seven by 43 gauge and they were truly limited editions. The boxes were numbered, 10 count boxes. So I made 500 in Nibano, 500 in Maduro, and we were shipped those out of sequence from the factory. So some folks had bought certain boxes and those boxes were numbered and they were kind of keepsakes. So if Kendall buys box 23 of 500, I don't know if 23 or 500 was stolen or if it was bought by you. So I couldn't very well replicate another 23500 because that undermines your purchase. So those were never to be recovered. They, that was gone. So we tried to make that up somehow by coming out with a limited edition cigar and we called it the sledgehammer as a pun based on the principal tool used. And you know what, it took off and now it's part of our core line. The limited edition band is gone. We have a beautiful secondary band that attaches almost like a jigsaw puzzle into the Casa Cuevas logo and it's, it's full on. And it's been our most well received cigar. So we got such a blessing out of that theft. That cigar would not have been born but for right. that necessity. And it's turned out to be our, our best seller almost to some degree. Uh, it's our most full bodied. It's our most expensive stick. Uh, it, it, took the most labor to do it, and we're very, very proud of it. That's awesome. Yeah. I actually yeah. remember hearing about that story on the news and reading about it, and my heart broke when I heard right. it. It just was how much they Chris, got. It was, it was awful. Yeah. It was awful. And, and for those of you guys who know, who've been following the channel, you know, for a while, um, part of what I do, you know, for work is uh, theft and fraud investigation. So I, I deal with this stuff. Wow. quite frequently so when I actually heard about that 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 killed me to see just how yeah. much they got it was brutal they, they wiped it out and it was uh, seven guys five hours wow five hours um, a lot of different things there, there were cameras all over the front from my my fellow neighbors there with the warehouse and so there were cameras in the back and they were all covered up the cameras didn't do a darn bit of good right. um, and they took a long time because they were startled and they came back and they got startled again and then when they broke they had too thick rebar going through in an electrical tube as well. So they were left with a small window with which to climb through and get the boxes out. So that took a, lot, a long time for them, thank God. At least they struggled with it. Uh, I remember it was 
pouring rain that night because you can see the rain coming down in the cameras. And once all the boxes were in the alleyway, then that's when the box truck pulls up, they load it up. I mean, watching it happen, it's painful as hell. Right. Uh, but it wasn't their first rodeo. Right. They were very, very thorough in what they did and how they did it. But anyway. Uh, Happy ending to this. Good at, yeah. As you can see, yeah. the man is still going strong. Absolutely. And it brought a new thought and a new idea for a wonderful cigar and it's running rampant now. So hope you enjoy it with stove, but this man is still running. So okay. if uh, somebody was looking to get Casa Cuevas, where would they go? Well, the Casa Cuevas website has a listing of where we are. Um, we need to, in the interest of a full disclosure, we really need to update that in a hurry. Um, some catalogs carry us as well, all the, the major ones do, but the Reserva line, for example, is no longer, is not found anyway in any other catalog, so it's very much a brick and mortar right now. Okay. But really, the, your best starting point is if you go to the Casa Cuevas Cigars website, there's a listing of states, and within that state, the locations where the shops are, uh, we're not everywhere yet. Certainly, we'd like to be there, and hopefully, we will be there in the near future. But under three years, I think we've grown yeah, you, considerably. Expanded quite a bit. We have, we have. Uh, again, because of folks like come. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, what's what's in the future for Casa Cuevas? What's next? If the FDA <laughs> allows us to come May, I certainly would like to expand our, our lines. You're sort of precluded from doing that to a large degree, but I, I think things are going to be okay if they do so. I'd like to work with different Maduro wrappers. So far we've worked with San Andres on both the core line and the Reserva line. I'm really looking at a project with perhaps Matafina from Brazil. Okay. I'm excited about that. Um, I certainly want to expand the Reserva line. The Reserva line, and I'm going to get geeky on you, is a predicate product. So that one's exempt from being touched by the FDA. I'm limited to sizes, but we have still to be able to launch a Lancero in that size, a Corona. So maybe sizes, I think a lot of folks are turning now to the smaller gauges. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you get a lot of flavor out of those and we had such a, a, a great success with the flacos that were not stolen that, um, you know, think about that. But right now my, my focus is expanding possibly La Mandaria using a Matafina wrapper and then seeing where that takes us because I awesome. love that rapper. I love that rapper. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So, on the, the so, so for our, our viewers at the Cigar Titan channel, we get a lot of uh, beginner smokers. Okay. We get a lot of newcomers to the cigar society. So outside of being, you know, fifth generation businessman and the rep for Casa Cuevas, what do you two, and this is for both of you to answer, uh, what do you guys enjoy about the Cigar Society itself, the atmosphere when you guys come to a lounge or go to an event outside of your work capacity? I got it, I got it. The thing I like about going into a lounge and you guys that come into it, it is I possibly the friendliest environment right. about anywhere. I mean, you go into a bar and you certainly don't get that kind of right. camaraderie, yeah. the, the welcoming. More often than not, shops, people walk in and they'll shake everybody's hand yeah. in that shop. Everybody kind of knows each other. And you know what, you're, 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 what, whatever resources life has thrown your way really don't matter at that point. So you can have the multimillionaire sitting next to the gentleman who mows lawns for a living, next to the guy who's retired, uh, and they're sharing that cigar and that commonality that brings them together. Exactly. I, I, I urge you to think about some other venue where you go in and have that happen. It doesn't happen at the same restaurants because they don't frequent the same restaurants. It right. doesn't happen at the same lounges. They don't do that when they play golf. They probably play golf in different locations right. because of the cost involved and whatnot. But damn it, they sit down and smoke a cigar and they're all the same. Exactly. Yep. And that's really, really cool. I think it's super cool. And then you get networking happening within that too. Yeah. So I, that's the thing I enjoy the most. What about you, Christine? I agree. I was going to say, okay. <laughs> I took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> Do you work any of the events? Are you usually present at any of the events? Is there any events coming up that you're going to be attending? Uh, absolutely. So uh, we had an event last night mm -hmm. at Calibra Cigar Lounge in Ontario, uh, one the day before in Arcadia. Um, and uh, we don't have any events scheduled in the near future, but I'm sure that will be changing soon. Okay. So and I'll keep you posted. Okay, great. And if somebody was interested in 
kind of keeping track of where you're going to be? Is that something you can find on your website, social media? How would they how would they be able to track where you guys are going? Yeah, so I, I post everything on my social media, on Instagram, I'm Smoky Affair. So I usually will post any upcoming events okay. uh, leading up to it. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. So to kind of jump off a topic last night, so that you guys know we were all here under the same house enjoying cigars and each other. And it was Super Bowl yesterday. Mm-hmm. So was was the outcome what y'all expected when, when your favorite team was playing? I know my team wasn't playing because the Rams got thrown out weeks ago. You know, so did you guys enjoy yourselves last night? I, I did. I'm a Dolphins fan, so let's not even go there. Uh, <laughs> but you know what? If they ever make it and when they make it and they win it, I, at least I, I told my kids, uh, you can always say your dad was never a fair-weathered fan. Right? I've always been with him. So I've, I've, I've been suffering for decades. Um, aside from that, you know what? I was surprised, actually that the outcome turned out to be what it was, especially 20 to twenty to 10 at one point, and the game was essentially, what, six minutes and change. Yeah. So that was, it was amazing, and it was another good Super Bowl. We've had a, a good string of good ones, because yeah. you all remember yeah. for a while, there were blowouts, and yeah. by halftime, you just, you don't care anymore. Right. So, yeah, it was a damn good game. Yeah. Right. Damn good game. All right, Cigar fam, so we are done with this interview. Hope you guys enjoyed the show as much as we have. Lewis from Casa Cueva Cigars, we enjoy. Thank, thank you for coming out. Yes, thank, thank you guys very much. We thank appreciate you. it. Thank you guys. And I thank you for coming in and representing the Sisters of the Leaf that are both reps and within the cigar community. So if you are new to our channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that bell right up there so you get a new notification every time we get a new video. And until next, folks, live how you smoke, smoke how you live, and that's smooth, baby. Take care, everybody. <laughs>